Hey guys, it's Dani. Welcome to another episode from our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Today, as promised, part two of our mini Phalaenopsis mini care series, let's say. Last time we talked about repotting these orchids and I showed you how to go about repotting, even if you don't know pretty much anything about orchids. And today we will continue with some aftercare tips, which will include watering, cutting the flower spike and a few other details. Right, so before we start, today's video together with our entire Orchid Care for Beginner series is sponsored by RepotMe.com who offers you everything you could possibly need to take care of your orchid. From potting mixes to pots, fertilizers, accessories and many many more things. They have it all, and not only for orchids, but also for other houseplants as well, such as cacti and succulents. Many of the things that I am using in today's video have been provided by RepotMe, so I'll link it down below to their website together with the products that I personally find absolutely wonderful and I keep using over and over, and I'm sure you're gonna like them as well. So check the description, and with that said, let us start. So it has been about a month ever since we repotted our orchids and let me just show you how they're doing. So first off you can see they do not have any more flowers and that is absolutely normal. Many of us tend to panic a little bit when we see the flowers drop but actually that's absolutely fine, it's absolutely normal. Flowers don't live forever. Do you know any flower that never fades? Don't answer because I'm sure there are some decorative flowers which can be preserved. Anyway, apart from those, no flower lasts forever and orchid flowers don't either. Now, especially because we are very close to the warm season and the last video was shot in May, now it's June, it's summertime in the Northern Hemisphere where I am, it is time to grow leaves and roots not flowers. So eventually your mini Phalaenopsis will lose its flowers. Sometimes it can stay in bloom throughout the summer as well if you have a rather cooler home or cooler environment. Most of the times though it will start to lose its flowers as the warmer months begin. One of the orchids actually completely dried up her flower spike while the other one still has a green flower spike. Both of these scenarios are absolutely normal and it just has to do sometimes with the genetics of the orchid. <laughs> okay, this one is moving on its own. My table is a little wet. There's nothing weird happening in the room. <laughs> so what do we do in each of these instances? Well, first of all, in the case of the completely dry flower spike, there is absolutely no point in keeping it. A dried flower spike will never rebloom again, no matter what. Dry means not alive anymore. So you can go ahead and cut it close to the base, as close as you can go, and give it a clean cut, just like this, with a strong scissors, or better yet, a pair of shears or pruners. And of course, I'm using my trusty Pro Snips from Repotme that I've been using for three years at this point. Very good quality tool to have. So in this case, there's really not much to do than cut the flower spike. You can obviously leave the flower spike. The orchid won't mind. It will degrade in time slowly, but it can be very awkward to be around. You can snag your clothes into it if you have pets or kids. It's just the thing poking out and making everything a little bit more awkward. And in the worst case scenario, it can mean the orchid falling on the floor, falling out of its pot, breaking leaves, breaking roots. Not fun. So I personally don't recommend you leave on dried flower spikes. Right, what do we do with the green flower spike? Well, we have two options. You might have heard everybody say, never cut Phalaenopsis flower spikes if they're green. But nobody tells you why and they make it sound like something bad will happen to your orchid if you cut the flower spike and in reality nothing bad will happen the most precious structures on an orchid are leaves and roots they ensure that the orchid will survive so why do people say never cut flower spikes or cut them above a node well because they can branch out and they can give you a few more flowers practically what we can do is one of two things first we can cut the flower spike above a note. I'll get you in a little closer so I can explain. So if we look on our flower spike, can we see we have nodes throughout its length? 
what we want to do if we want to encourage another secondary spike or a branch is we need to cut the flower spike above one of these nodes. About one centimeter, that would be half an inch above, like so, we can make a clean cut right here, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I will cut this flower spike above a node and then just the orchid be. Now, the orchid might produce a secondary branch from this very node or from the node below or from both of them. Most probably it will produce a branch from the node above. But it doesn't always happen. I would say it sometimes happens 50% of the times and it has to do with the environment. If the environment is on the cool side, you will get some secondary spikes. If it's rather warm, the orchid will just go on to produce new leaves and new roots. Second option, we can go ahead and cut the flower spike all the way down just like the first flower spike, the dry one. I went ahead and I cut it because I personally am not a fan of leaving these flower spikes be. And the reason why, I detail a lot in a different video, which you can see down below. I personally do believe leaving old flower spikes be drains some of the energy of the orchid and it can impair future flowerings from reaching full potential. Anyway, so even if you cut the flower spike all the way down, it's absolutely fine. And some growers actually prefer it rather than leaving it on and having secondary branches, which in my opinion are not as showy as a primary flower spike. So through the summer, our orchids will grow vegetatively, meaning new roots and new leaves. When will they rebloom? in the blooming season, which happens to be the cooler season. And the exact time of the year will depend on your location. Some of us have very long summers, some of us live in the southern hemisphere, so I will not say December or November or a particular month. It will happen when the temperatures get a little bit cool. I won't insist too much on this because I have a dedicated video on how to rebloom Phalaenopsis orchids. Same rules apply for the mini Phalaenopsis. They need a cool down, especially in the nighttime, for a few weeks, and that should promote new flower spike production. And the cycle repeats itself. It will bloom, it will create beautiful flowers, and at some point those flowers will fall off, and we will find ourselves in the exact situation as today. Right, so that's about it when it comes to flowers, which I know many of you are wondering about. Now let's talk about the second most asked about aspect, watering. Maybe I should have started with watering, but the blooms, the blooms are what everybody asks me about. So how do we water our Phalaenopsis orchids? Well, if you remember last time when we repotted them, we used bark chips to pot these orchids. And I was saying that as a beginner, this is the most forgiving medium that you can use for orchids. A very, very airy mix of bark and other airy materials or just bark. And even if it will turn out not to be the greatest potting mix for you, in the long term, it will teach you a lot. And one thing it will teach you about is watering. Bark chips do not retain a lot of water. Therefore, the way we're gonna water these orchids will have to depend on how fast they dry. As a rule of thumb, Phalaenopsis orchids, including miniature Phalaenopsis, should be watered when they are dry. Not every seven days or 10 days or three days, but every time they dry. And that can change throughout the year depending on the season and the temperature in your room. So whenever you see the potting mix is dry and the roots are dry, that's when you water the orchid, not sooner. If it's still a little damp, you can wait a few more days and it's actually better to wait because you're gonna prolong the life of your potting mix and you will avoid the risk of suffocating the roots. Now I'll get you in close again so you can see how wet bark looks like in contrast to dry bark. So in this pot we have both wet bark and dry bark. I did a little all-in-one situation. The top part is dry bark while the bottom you can clearly see it's wet. When all of the bark looks like this section, that's when you should water the orchid. If your orchid looks more like the bottom section and the roots are very green, then you can wait with watering. Do not water, let it be a few more days, and when it gets dry, that's when you water. If the roots are visible through the transparent pots, you can tell dry roots from wet roots through their color. Usually dry roots will be a silvery gray color, while wet roots will be pretty green. Now, how do we water the orchid, the actual procedure? Well, there are two options that I would recommend, which I think are very simple. First one is running water through the pot 
at the sink. Whether you're gonna use a watering can or the faucet, all you need to do is just run that water through the pot for maybe 10 seconds or so, then let the pot drain very, very well, and then put it back in its place in its decorative pot if you're using such pots, and you are good to go. Just remember not to leave pools of water at the bottom of your decorative pot or your dish. In some climates, that could be enough to degrade the bark faster or to damage the roots. That is option number one, and that style of watering is particularly useful in cooler climates or maybe very humid climates. If with that watering, you can get your orchid on a five to seven or even 10 day schedule, you are golden. If watering like that means you have to water once a week or so, then that is perfect. Do not change the watering style. That is what I find pretty comfortable. I wouldn't like to water every single day. And while I'm sure some of you really find watering therapeutical, I know some of you really do not have time. I don't have time either. So if you can get away with five to seven to ten days in between waterings, you are golden. Keep watering like that. Now version number two, this will be much more useful for those climates which are maybe warm or very dry or both, such as my climate. And this is soaking the orchid pots. Now, as you could see, my orchids are still a little bit wet, but that's okay. I live in an oven and things dry out very fast here, so it doesn't matter that I'm watering them even if they're not dry. So let me demonstrate the soaking method. So again, you can go at the sink or you can use a watering can. And all we need to do is fill this decorative pot all the way to the top to where the actual orchid pot inside ends. So you don't need to soak the entire orchid just the actual pot. And you can leave this or it could be like this for 10-15 minutes to properly soak, then pull the pot out and let it drain very, very, very well. And then dump the water that you have here in the decorative pot and put the orchid inside and it should be good, hopefully for another five to 10 days. Now, which method should you use? It's trial and error. If you know your environment very well, you can opt for either one of them. If you're not sure though, first go for the rinsing or running water through the pot and see how many days your pot lasts or how many days it stays wet. It's absolutely fine if it dries within a day and you have to water in a day or two. The orchid will not mind. It's all about our comfort. If you're absolutely fine with watering like this every day or every two to three days, absolutely fine, you can go ahead and do that. But if it will get tiring, which I suspect it will at some point, go ahead and use the soaking method. This will soak the bark a little better, it will also soak the roots, and it can keep your orchid hydrated for longer. So you can get away with more water, more days <laughs> in between waterings. This is the main difference between these two styles of watering. Both of them work just as great. It depends who you are and how your environment is. Also, some people like to put the water in the decorative pot and then just sit the plant inside. So not watering from above, just like I did. And that is a very, very safe technique because one thing you should know and you should keep in mind with any orchid, no matter if it's a mini or big phalaenopsis, you should not put water in the crown like this. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> you should not put water in the crown or in between the leaves because that water can sit there for long enough to accumulate bacteria, again, depending on environment. See, naturally, these orchids don't grow upright. This is just something that we developed for the ease of culture. But naturally, these orchids would grow on a tree tilted. And actually, let me show you an orchid that is already very tilted. It's a primary hybrid, very close to a species, to show you how it should look like. There she is. This is much more like how a Phalaenopsis should grow, given I still keep it in a pot, but you can see how tilted she is. Some of these flower shop Phalaenopsis, even the minis, can actually tilt like this as they grow in your environment, and that is absolutely fine. But you can see and you can imagine if water runs through this orchid, it's just gonna drip down. It's not gonna stay accumulating in the crowns. But with these orchids that have been trained practically to grow like this, usually they keep them in these plastic sleeves like this just to save space. 
these orchids at this stage can actually hold on to that water like a funnel and that water can lead to rotting of the crown or the stem so whatever you do do not splash water on the orchid it's not the same as a wild orchid these are man-made hybrids they can sometimes be more sensitive to these stuff and obviously our environment it's not windy doesn't have fresh air all the time doesn't have the same bacteria and microbes like a natural setting so whatever you do when watering make sure you don't leave water standing in the crowns and in the leaf joints and if you have some droplets there get a paper napkin absorb it and dry it as best as possible and you should be good to go now related to watering is also fertilizing. Just like a normal Phalaenopsis, mini fell also is a pretty heavy feeder in my opinion if we compare it to other orchids and does benefit from a good fertilizing regimen. I personally use for the past seven years now the MSU fertilizer that you will always have linked down below in the description because it is a full menu fertilizer. It also has calcium and magnesium, so you don't have to supplement them if your water is soft or you're using rainwater or reverse osmosis water. But there's also a fertilizer designed for tap water or well water. So I'll link you to that one down below as well. But if you don't have access to these fertilizers, any orchid fertilizer that you find available, try though to make sure that you have as big of a list of nutrients as possible. Some fertilizers sadly only have the macros like nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and that's not even all the macros you can give without getting into too much detail. Try to find one or two fertilizers that you can use alternatively, which will give your orchid as many nutrients as possible. Whatever fertilizer you choose, it is important that you fertilize according to what the label tells you and that you fertilize regularly because these orchids will benefit a lot from fertilizer. They will grow pretty much using the nutrients that fertilizers provide. And if you've seen the previous video one month ago, you can see how they can end up looking absolutely spectacular and fabulous and actually fertilizer is a big part on why I managed to get such incredible blooms from my mini phalaenopsis. So whatever fertilizer you have available will be much better than nothing. All right, so these were the two main things that everybody asked me about miniature phalaenopsis. But when it comes to other care requirements such as light, temperature and all of that, well, these orchids are just like any other phalaenopsis orchid, meaning they do like warmth. So except for that cool down in winter, they like to stay rather warm, not very hot. Room temperature should be just fine for them. I like to say that phalaenopsis are the perfect house pet because they like the same conditions like we do. When it comes to humidity, good news, these are very, very strong plants. They are tolerant of low humidity and I personally do not believe you should hassle with humidity trays and humidifiers and things of the sorts. If more humidity will also benefit you, why not? You can absolutely use it, they will not say no. The only difference that humidity in the air makes, pretty much, is how often you're gonna water. Because in lower humidity, these orchids will transpire more water, they will lose more water, so you're gonna have to water them more often. But they're not really gonna suffer all that much. So if you don't wanna hassle with extra humidifiers and things, you don't have to. Your orchid can do absolutely fine without. Just make sure you water it in time. When it comes to light, again, they don't need very bright light. If you have a bright shade location in your home, that should be just fine. And when I say bright shade, I mean a location that doesn't necessarily receive direct sunlight, but the light bounces from the walls in a way that it creates a bright spot. If you have a little bit of sun in the morning, particularly filtered through a shade cloth or a sheer curtain, that is absolutely fine. If you wanna test out locations and you have some sun in those locations, Throughout the day or when the sun hits your orchid, just touch the leaf. If it gets warm or rather hot, that's a big no-no. The leaf can actually burn, but if it stays cool, then you're good. Your orchid can actually receive a little bit of sun. But depending where you are on earth, your sun, quote unquote, can be a little bit more aggressive than in other locations. So just monitor your orchid if you know it gets a little bit of sun. Reblooming, as I said, will come after a good growth season, after good care, good fertilizer, and 
adequate conditions and a little bit of a cool down. So do not worry, it will rebloom if you offer the good conditions and if your orchid never bloomed before, then do check on that temperature drop. My guess is that you kept the temperature pretty constant and pretty warm all year round for your orchid. So try to put it in a place that will receive a little bit of a cool down, especially in the nighttime. Maybe a garage, an unheated garage or a balcony. I used to keep my orchids in the balcony a few years ago and that worked a treat because the temperature in the balcony was fluctuating much more than in the house. So you can experiment a little bit and place your orchid at least in the nighttime if you don't have light in that location. In the nighttime, place it there for a few weeks and I think you will have a flower spike. And with that said, pretty much these orchids take the same type of care as any other Phalaenopsis, but they are tiny. Don't expect them to remain this tiny though. They are very young and they will grow a little bit more. Not a whole lot, not like the big Phalaenopsis, but they will grow a little bit. So the next pot you're gonna use will be bigger than this, guaranteed. When will you repot? When the medium breaks down, but I would say at this point it's a good idea to think about repotting in about a year to two years, depending how fast your orchid will grow. Now orchids don't really care if they're pot bound, they're epiphytes, these particular orchids, but you will care about it because it will start to dry out a little bit faster than normal. As the roots grow, they will pretty much dislocate the potting mix, they will literally throw away the bark chips and you will end up with a pot full of roots that will not retain water. So you might have to water too often. When that happens, you can definitely upgrade to a bigger pot. And also it's a good idea to change the bark every two years or so, just to maintain it fresh. After two years, the bark can be a little bit on the questionable side, a little broken down. So we want fresh bark for our orchids. And I think that is about it for the basic mini Phalaenopsis care guide. As I was saying, everything else is exactly like any other Phalaenopsis. So I hope that these two videos, which by the way, if you didn't watch the first video with the repotting, check it down below. It's a very detailed guide, just like this one. So check that one too. And I hope these two videos will help you with your miniature Phalaenopsis. And I hope that in a couple of years or so, you will have an amazing bloom show from your mini phalaenopsis. I love mini phals. They fit everywhere and they can produce a ton of blooms that are very compact. They, they're not spindly like the big phalaenopsis, which are gorgeous too. But the mini phals, they're just charming. So I hope you'll enjoy your mini phalaenopsis and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you RepodMe for sponsoring yet another Orchid Care for Beginners episode. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye.